Good evening, my name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Tonight, I'd like to speak to you about the issue with the Obama administration arming the Syrian rebels. <clears throat> As in Libya, many of the most effective anti-Assad fighting forces are Mujahideen, that is, holy warriors who the U.S. has taken to uh, liking to call Al-Qaeda, and in fact is now self-identifying in some cases. There are various types of uh, religious fighters in Libya <clears throat> uh, that are um, Salafist and right-wing religious extremists that have a lot of experience in battle. In fact, many went to Libya to fight the heretic Gaddafi for his unusual version of Islamic socialism, and then went on to Syria to fight the heretic Assad. Now, the key problem in Syria is that the more likely the rebels are to overtake government positions, the greater the chance that they will acquire access to uh, the Assad government's estimated 700 tons. And this is not estimated to... Um, this is ironic that they haven't brought this up. This is a long-established stockpile that's been there for... 20 or 30 years that they have 700 tons of sarin gas, which could uh, equip 3,000 warheads, and each warhead could uh, uh, contaminate an area of 11 miles in diameter, this larger than San Francisco, a very large area. San Francisco's got a three-mile radius. This is a six-mile radius or a four-mile radius, and this is a five-and-a-half-mile radius. <clears throat> So one of these would take up most of a large city. Religious ex these are religious extremists have been radicalized by a decade of harsh U.S. NATO treatment and will likely to get access to these warheads if they haven't already. The concept of peace talks leading to a more democratic Syria simply to prevent these chemical stockpiles from being compromised should be considered. Now, of course, if Al-Qaeda used a nerve gas warhead, this would be really good news for the national security state, top secret America, and the trillion dollars worth of spending that goes along with it. Its budgets and power would grow enormously in, the, uh, in this ultimate nightmare scenario, which makes one see the same pattern in 9-11, where uh, warning signs were ignored because certain parties would have stood to benefit from chaos rising. Chaos Incorporated uh, blossoms as chaos in the world uh, rises. Uh, it doesn't mean that they want it to, but they can maintain a certain double think about it, to not take responsibility for uh, yet letting loose a hell on the earth uh, in the name of fighting terror. It's in fact sown. And if you don't believe me, I quote from the a Guardian, which had an article today about this. I'll give you the headline of it in a moment. Uh, Putin warns against arming Syrian rebels. At the end of this article, it said, Tory member of parliament, that is from the conservative uh, branch of the British parliament, MP Julian Lewis said it would be suicidal for Britain to hand arms to an opposition the government admits includes extremist elements. He told the BBC's Radio 4, the reason it would be suicidal would be that in taking over Syria, they would also inherit Syria's arsenal of weapons, including in particular the nerve gas, which is the center of so much attention. In the past, we've gone to war because we feared that weapons of mass destruction might fall under the hands of al-Qaeda, and it would be absolutely crazy to assist al-Qaeda to get their hands on the very sorts of weapons we must keep away from them at all costs. Uh, so food for thought. My name is Alexander Hagen. Thank you for listening. Good night and good luck.